Listen to people, learn what you can. Mm-hmm. What is racist and what is just ignorance? If you've got a friend or an ally or somebody in your corner there to support you, amazing. I just can't wait for the day where like, we're no longer pleasantly surprised that someone is like LGBT plus. Ask questions on a personal level do better. Asking pronouns. It was like the moment that I realized I was different. Winning that award topped this year off for me. Because without you, this world wouldn't be the same. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Welcome back to Are You Listening, the Oxfordshire Youth Podcast. Are You Listening is a podcast for young people by young people to discuss all of the things that they're passionate about. At Oxfordshire Youth, we wanted to make sure that young people had a space to fully express themselves in a way that they felt completely confident about. And that's how this podcast was created. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi everyone, my name's Nabila. My pronouns are she, her. Welcome back to Are You Listening podcast. Before we jump into today's episode, there is a trigger warning on domestic abuse. If this episode is triggering to any listeners, please do listen to our other episodes, which we cover many other topics. Thank you. Before this episode starts, I'm going to go through a few terms that will be mentioned throughout this episode. The definition of boycotting. To withdraw from commercial or social relations with a country, organisation or person as a protest. The definition of socialization, the process of learning to behave in a way that is acceptable to society. The definition of Eurocentric, focusing on European culture or history to the exclusion of a wider view of the world. The definition of social justice, justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities and privileges within a society. The definition of domestic abuse. Domestic abuse is a pattern of incidents of controlling, coercive, threatening, degrading and violent behaviour, including sexual violence. Those are all the terms that will be mentioned in today's episode. I hope you enjoy listening. Hello, hello. Welcome back to um, Oxford Youth. Are you listening? Uh, This is the third episode of our little activism series and I'm fortunate enough to be joined by my co-host. Hi, hi guys. Um, so I'm Nabila, um, my pronouns are she, her, and me and Molly are co-hosting this episode together, which I'm very grateful for. And shall we get started with the introductions? Yeah, absolutely. We've got some, yeah. some great guests also with us today. We've got uh, Mariam, Faustine and Noor, and we're going to be talking about activism, sort of what got us started, different methods of activism. Perfect. Shall we start with Faustine? My name's Faustine. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a student, a campaigner and a freelance writer. Mariam? My name is Mariam. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm the creative director of Help the World Oxford. Um, we'll link the Instagram. Um, and I'm also a student. Thank you. And finally, Noor. Hi, I'm Eleanor, um, but I prefer Noor. Uh, she, her, I'm a member of Oxford Youth Strike and I do some other stuff, but mainly I'm involved in climate activism. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being with us. Firstly, I think we just wanted to sort of talk about what got everyone into activism. What does it, it mean to you? How does it sort of take up a place in your lives? Yeah, I think it's a big question, but literally just at what point did you start wanting to be involved at what point did you look at something and be like I want to do that I'll start off with Noor if that's okay yeah um I think it started probably when a friend asked if I wanted to go to this meeting uh, for Oxford Youth Strike it was an absolute horrible meeting everyone was laughing it was just turned out to be a terrible meeting but um it it was sort of the start for me and I, and I was sort of ghosting on chats for quite a while and then I got more involved during lockdown but it's always been people that have got me involved and I think 
um, certainly within activist spaces, it's so nice because you meet so many people that think the same way as you and want the same thing as you. And sort of it's a really nice atmosphere and a really nice group of people to be involved with. And that's sort of what got me into it and I think has kept me into it as well as sort of a passion for social justice and things like that. Yeah, the people's a, a really good point. Sort of the, the common goals, common interests. That's a really good point. I, I was just wanted to say, um, the people, are, the community is so, so important. And like, you all have that sort of drive and that goal, as Molly was saying. Faustine, sorry, please go ahead. I think for a very long time, like even now, the, the relationship I have with the word activism and like activist is quite a complex one because um, I wouldn't say I really, I wouldn't really label myself an activist. I think when I turned kind of 14 or 15, I started to realise that there were a lot of things that were like very problematic and upsetting in the world and I thought they could be resolved with like a community-based approach um, and I found myself kind of gravitating towards wanting to be part of the community that can make a change. I think um, the thing that stands out for me the most was I went to Gosford Hill uh, Secondary School and I remember at the time Campsfield House, which is was an immigration detention centre, um, was still open and I'd taken like a little paper petition that I'd written by hand and tried to get all my friends and teachers to to sign it to get it closed down. Um, unfortunately, it obviously didn't work. But yeah, that was some something that I just remember kind of got me got me going. A lot of us kind of don't choose to become, I guess, quote unquote, activists. It's sort of something that you're, I guess, born into. <laughs> a lot of the times your sort of identities have been I guess politicized for you and so you don't really have any other option than to get involved and speak the truth. Yeah I agree actually that that resonates with me a lot I think maybe yeah like I feel like I was always meant to like the morals and sort of like how you think as a person like individually it sort of naturally like ends up in a quote-unquote activist like community. Mariam, would you like to tell us about why, why activism is important to you and how you sort of got involved in it? I guess I kind of fell into it more than anything. If I'm, if I'm honest, if I'm truthful about it, I don't really think I grasped or even understood what I was getting involved in when I started out at the beginning. Like, um, when we started doing protests and vigils and stuff, it was more just helping out. And I didn't really realize, okay, what is the bigger picture here? What am I, like, what are the actual goals we're trying to achieve? Why are we doing this in the first place? And I think that was just, for me, just maybe just ignorance or just age. And then as I grew older, I just thought, okay, hang on. I need to think about why I'm actually doing this. What, what is the end goal here? Why am I doing this? And then I guess it's also kind of now with social media, you constantly, you're constantly seeing these explicit images everywhere on people's Instagram stories and posts. And I guess when you're in this bubble, you're kind of like trapped. You're like, well, what can I as one individual do? You feel, I feel like a lot of us feel very helpless in that situation. And I guess that's why we gravitate towards activism and um working with others in this kind of solidarity that we have of common goals because it gives us a goal and it does work it does work when we all unite together we all have the same goal and I guess that in a way empowers us to um sort of fight for a better place better world to live in really yeah absolutely yeah that was really powerful but I I guess it's a, a sort of loneliness I guess when you, you first start about seeing things around you that you know are wrong and nothing's changing and you sort of think well am I the only one that sees that this isn't quite right and then you find a community of people that also see it and that together you're powerful enough to change things and that's really important. Definitely. I think it's a really powerful feeling especially protesting and when you're out there and you're having your voice heard and you hear people reacting you see people reacting you see that you're making actual difference it is really empowering especially when you're 
with loads of people like the protests I think when was it Nabila I can't remember the really big um, one we had April time oh, last gosh, year know. May last year wasn't it May. yeah and that was absolutely we had so many people we had Jeremy Corbyn and well and that was such a powerful um protest it's such a powerful demonstration we literally the, you know, all of the city center Westgate area was just packed with people it was mm. amazing yeah um no I remember that very well so myself and Marion we are part of Help Lord Oxford so Help Lord Oxford is a activist charity based non non-profit organization based in Oxford and we are youth led and female youth led <laughs> yeah 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 sorry yes female youth led women of color um lots of identities there which is why intersectional identities in activism is very very important um so this actually leads me on to our next um topic that i wanted to talk about so different spaces we find in activism so this can be in absolutely anything so what I've thought of so far is schools so activism in schools um, activism in art and creativity so that can be in any form of media um, activism in protesting like public demonstrations public protests street protests things like that um boycotting so these are all different spaces that we see activism in and they're all forms of activism so in schools for example pshe or your pd lessons or personal development lessons that is a form of activism in a way it is a form of activism so i definitely found that within schools of course where young we're like 11 to 19 18 including six forms and that socialization is definitely prime it's, it's it's a prime agent of socialization and it's where you really take in things and you really i don't know i i truly believe that school is definitely a massive um way of becoming oneself like you it influences you a lot so some things that obviously we learned in school was um like in our everyone knows like a pd and a pshe lesson right i'm not like talking crazy yeah no i know what you mean yeah, i can yeah, tell yeah. you what pshe stands for but oh, i know gosh. what you mean <laughs> yeah everyone's with me right yeah yeah okay cool um yeah so for example in schools pd pshe pd lessons um we would have been taught about safety in schools internet safety um those are all like forms of projecting uh activism onto like as young children and stuff um what other ways do you guys think that different spaces so different ways of socialization whether that be family as such why do you think it's important and how influential do you think it is I think kind of what you were saying was really important because I, I do agree schools are massive um agents of socialization especially at a young age they do they influence us way more than we actually think even with if you think about gender roles, you know, how these gender roles are projected on us, how different ideas, different belief systems are projected on us through schools. And it's not, you don't just go to, go to school to learn maths, English, science, you learn all these norms and customs and ideas that then we sometimes don't question and we think, okay, this is the way the world works or this is how it's supposed to be until we start thinking for ourselves and thinking more critically and thinking, okay, wait, hold on, this doesn't seem right. So I guess in that sense, school is really important in how we see the world, how it affects us. Even now, like certain topics they, they teach about in school, especially if you think about history, um, when they teach history in school, 
you know, it's often very one-sided. I never learn about anything other than World War Two, World War One, at history. Um, even A level is so one-sided. It was very Eurocentric, and there's this concept in sociology called the Eurocentric curriculum. I mean, if you do A level sociology, you probably know, it. and how there's this one-sidedness in the curriculum we only see one side of things and I think that can often influence you in later life you see you've only seen one side you never see the other side of things and I guess that plays a role in social justice and activism and how how you view the world I guess that's just, just a little waffle but <laughs> yeah. no that's no, no you're absolutely right yeah the wait is finally over. The Youth Awards tickets are finally here and we cannot wait to see you on the 17th of October at the New Theatre. Head to the New Theatre website to make sure you can get your tickets right now. So I'll talk about schools just briefly because I think that's the one I can kind of like relate to the most. Yeah, of course. Um, which links in with some work that I've been doing on the side. Um, I think that schools and education in general is like a really important tool for everyone to have um, and everyone to access, which unfortunately is not, it's not always equal access in this country and other countries because of, of different barriers. I'm gonna touch on, on PSHE. Um, I'm working on a campaign at the moment to make it mandatory for all sixth formers, so year 12 and year 13, and colleges that teach 16 to 19 year olds. Um, to have in-depth lessons on domestic abuse, um, which I think is really important because education, I see it as like a tool for prevention. And I think it's really important that all young people are like equipped with the knowledge as to what, what's a healthy relationship and what's not. Um, so I think PSHE is a good, a good starting place to kind of get the young people ready for the outside world and things like that really. I think we really need that because I remember at sixth form for my we had like these PSHE, I'll say PSHE but they weren't really PSHE lessons and they were just so poor like it would just be the PE teacher reading off a powerpoint in the classroom no one paying attention there was no really like the points they were trying to give out were good I guess but the way they were delivered and who was delivering them and how they were delivered was so bad. And I think we really need that because at 16 to 18, you're, you're still growing, you're still learning about the world, you're still learning about your own body. And it's so easy to go down the wrong path and not realise and not see the red flags because you just don't know. A hundred percent. I agree. I think um, maybe Faustine, if you did you want to respond to that? anymore? Yeah, no, no, I agree with um, Marin entirely because... I left school a while ago now like I'm at uni now and I know that like the policies and stuff has changed so for example now in 2020 it was passed that all secondary schools need to teach about the topic um, but when you get to sixth form in college it's kind of up to them whether they want to teach it or not and I think this is where like we can find a gap as to what we as activists can do to kind of improve that because I really think that education doesn't stop at a certain age like you don't stop becoming more vulnerable when you reach 16. I think that education needs to carry on all the way up to 19, which is why I'm so passionate about this hopefully being kind of explored and becoming mandatory in sixth form. So yeah, I just completely agree with everything that she said and I hope that we manage to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. I guess sort of what what I'm I'm picking up on is that school is an incredible resource for growing and for learning not only about the world about yourself about your future but when they don't give you the right information it can be very limiting Mariam made a really good point about sort of the eurocentric history lessons and that sort of thing and it's it's so important that we get the right sort of education we get sort of up-to-date relevant information that will help us in our future that we are shaped by our education i think it also um 
links really, really nicely. Uh, Noor, you wanted to talk about, um, especially in like climate activism, the school strikes that I remember attending and I remember everyone talking about. Um, obviously, I'm out of school now, but um, Noor, if you could talk about the importance you feel in school strikes and um, why you think that, you know, young people especially as, as like climate activists are generally the youth would you know um so why do you think that it's important that the activism has not directed but sort of in a way towards schools well first off um schools are very important but i learn i think i've learned the most outside of a classroom like um it's the sort of informal informal conversations you have with your teachers and it's things like going on youth strikes um even you know even now when we get like five people turning up they still i still learn so much just by the process it kind of forces you to do so much reading and so much learning and you meet so many people that you wouldn't through school and i think sort of sometimes it's the stuff you do out of school that's what we need to get into the classroom like so much of the sort of kind of new green education stuff is about getting people doing what they're doing out of school sort of more in school so it's available to everyone um there are people who i, I revise outside most days um but there are people who never get that contact outside and it's things like kind of getting schools more outside and getting people more outside that the youth strikes sort of kind of woke me up to um that kind of that's what i think is wrong with the education system currently it's very focused on one way of learning and there are so many ways of learning one of which is sort of kind of going out and using your voice um the kind of like i can see it with in my friendship group um because i was doing activism during lockdown and they weren't i have so much more life skills than they do because they were sort of shut in at home during lockdown. Meanwhile, I was sort of accessing a whole kind of social circle that they weren't a part of. And that has allowed me to develop in a way that they didn't get because of lockdown. And I think that so things like particularly the school strikes in some ways really sort of enabled me to continue working, continue developing and continue learning about the world even during lockdown. So um, there are so many forms of learning and there are so many ways that kind of our social circles enable those forms of work uh, learning that um that schools really lack yeah that's yeah. that's really important i love the the idea of sort of bringing it into the classrooms sort of making it accessible to everyone because there are people that can't go out and and attend protests or that struggle to find that sort of that sort of community and I love the idea of making that available to everyone. Definitely and I also picked up on what would you say um, with the education that is the minimal education that there is in schools on climate change on environmentalism what's your opinion on that Noor and how would you want to change it? Um, well so I'm involved in Oxford Youth Strike, but I'm also involved in other groups. One of them is a group that's kind of involved through schools, We're kind of talking to the government. It's called the UK School Sustainability Network. There's a group in Oxford um, and they've been talking to the government for quite a while. We, well, we've been talking to the government for quite a while about how to bring sort of more climate education into schools. Um, and what we've noticed is there's kind of what most people know about the climate change is basic. Um, it's things like in your geography textbook and in your science tech book, textbook, it describes climate change as debatable. And 97% of scientists who know what they're talking about, about the climate, agree that the climate crisis is happening. And so much of the problem with computing and sort of understanding the climate crisis is that it's seen as a kind of distant and immediate and not immediate threat. So I think that's one of the problems. And I think probably the biggest problem with current kind of climate change education is that it doesn't focus enough on how it affects us now it's presented as this distant thing that we've got until 2050 to figure out and so much of our current climate um, education is built around the politics of it rather than the science of it i think and that's one of the really big issues 
I completely agree on that. It's becoming so, it's becoming all about politics. And I just, it's as if it's not going to happen very, it's all just been completely like sugarcoated. And do you know who it is who's doing that? It's not our generation. It's the older generations. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Are You Listening? If you would like to hear part two of this conversation, then make sure you check out the next episode where we'll be continuing this interesting conversation. In this episode, we cover topics such as social justice in different agents of socialisation, such as schools or and family. If you are interested in part two of this conversation, then make sure you check out the next episode if you enjoyed this episode of are you listening make sure you subscribe whether you're on anchor spotify or apple podcast and also make sure you're following us on social media as well at oxfordshire youth on instagram and tiktok and at ox youth on twitter <laughs>